Welcome to Making Shifts. We believe that manufacturing is challenging, but if you are connected to a community of leaders, you can elevate your skills, solve your problems, and grow your business. I'm your host, Jim Carr, and I'm joined in the studio with my co-host, Jason J.Z. Zanger. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great, Jim. How are you? I'm well. It's good to see you back yeah, from vacation. We're here at MXD, formerly DMDII. It's always good to be at home in our studio here uh, at uh, MXD. And uh, we've got a great show lined up for today. And I'm looking forward to equipping and inspiring more manufacturing leaders. Yeah, and I'm finally well rested. Good. I'm glad to hear that. That I needed, which was disconnected. I saw about I don't know 30 text messages, group texts from you all, and I just ignored them all. Didn't read them while I was on vacation. Well, I, I kind of figured that, so I was avoiding texting or emailing you during that time, and um, I liked your um, cutesy uh, email response too. Oh, well, you like that? What yeah. did it say? I don't remember. Well, it said something about how you needed a much much needed rest. Yes. And that you would not return any emails until you got back. So good for you. That's great. I'm glad you could do that. I could not do that. Um, I don't think I could just be that disconnected for for any amount of time. I've only done it. This is only the second time that I've done it. Yeah. Um, because normally I'd be like you, where I just do like a little bit of work in the morning while my wife's sleeping or, or something like that, which I know you have typically done in the past. But I just I really needed to disconnect. And I, and I got to be honest with you, I think that it helps to revitalize and maybe stir up some creativity and mm -hmm. you know even problem solving skills when you can rest your brain like that I think you know having being in drive constantly is, is tough it's yeah. tough on your brain really I agree I agree so maybe you should try it I will think about it maybe How just about two that? days two or three days uh, I, would be, I would be happy to try that I would be happy to try that but anyway Jason before we get into the episode you know I, it was really impactful um, when we had Paul Van Meter on the show a few weeks ago, and he talked about franchising our manufacturing companies. It's quite, processes. Yeah, it's quite a concept, and you know, the more I think about it, and the more I try to adapt those processes into Car Machine and Tool, I, I think of how important it is to actually have written processes have a succinct procedure that we follow every day. No matter how simple we may think it is, if we can set up processes within our businesses that are very repeatable and guidelined and succinct again, I really think that that will create a lot less stress. Well, it's the only way, and to grow. a lot more throughput on your business. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you can't grow because, without that. I mean, like, there's no way that you can, you know, just do everything off the cuff. You can't. You know, when you when you have a growing company, right? And, and so that's that's what it's and, all about. And you know what I always say, and I say this to my team every week at our production meeting. I'm like, you know. One person cannot run this business. I need every single one of you sitting at this table today. You all have your unique skill sets. They're all valuable to the operation of this company. And when everyone is in the mode, that's when we have the best throughput at the end of the day. So everyone has a, a skill, everyone has a process, and every, if everyone stays within those parameters, that's when we're going to have the best bang. Yeah, that's I, where I, agree have the most you. I agree with you. I agree. And you know, as as my company as we've grown from you know like twelve to now almost like fifty people, those things have gotten a little out of hand, and we're actually uh, just our ownership and leadership is going to be having a day, and we're going to really take a step back and say, are we really set up with those right people doing the right things, like you just said? Um, because I think we've gotten a little out of hand as we've grown, and I don't think that we're, I think we need to be set up differently in the future during this different stage in our business growth. Yeah, so, just pull it back just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. If you recall, I know you're you're reading your first book ever. You're reading. I'm done. Oh, you're I'm done. done. Hey, I finished hey, it. High five. I know. Bam. <laughs> no, seriously, that was that was a big thing I'm very for proud me, of Jim. I you know. I know you are. I know. I'm very proud of you. It's been several years. I've been hounding you and hounding you and hounding you yeah. to read a book. Yeah. And you finally read a book. I did. It took you like what, like six or seven years of us knowing each other. I know. For you, for you but it only took book. me like. 
um, couple months we got it done, but we did and it as a team. Being, and it's, it was very impactful. I have, I have okay. to tell you, and the Metalworking Nation, if you're going to read a book, read Traction. Um, if you're a small business, if you're a business owner, it doesn't have to even be a small business. Yeah. It has been life changing for me and my in my business. That's great. And, well, our business because it's not my business; it's everybody that works at cars. Well, business. well don't forget. I, I have two thoughts as far as this goes. Yeah, don't go. forget you made a promise to another gentleman to read a book too. I did. So I did. So that's the okay. first one. Okay. And, yeah. and then the second thing is, yep. I don't know if you remember in Traction they talked about FBA, which is followed by all which that's their terminology to say, okay, we need to set up processes and everybody in the company needs to follow those processes. Yeah. Do you recall that in the book, FBA? No. no. no? That's another acronym. That's another acronym. That's another acronym. acronym. And, then we and are going to be talking about a new yeah, acronym Yeah, because we're talking about SAS the mass and FBA and all that kind of, we're going to come out with the Making Chips Guide to Acronyms okay. eventually. You can write it. Yeah. So you want to tell the Metal Working Nation about this new acronym that we're going to introduce today? Well, and actually, our, our guest is going to actually tell us about... Yeah, so, well, SAS is a term, S-A-A-S, that's been around for a long time. It's oh, I thought it was only one A. It's no, S -A -A Software as a, a Service. Okay, got I it. I corrected you in the, in the script. Oh, thank you. Um, and so, essentially, this came out... You do have my back, don't you? I do, always. Yeah, thank you. Um, this came out when the... Um, you know, really the, the notion of having software on through a web browser really started to take off. So when companies started to realize that they could deploy software instead of on somebody's computer through a browser, and they were able to, instead of selling a license one time, they could sell it on a monthly reoccurring revenue stream. And that's really the, the future direction of where software is going. Oh, totally. You bought software for yep. your ERP system that's like that. I just bought software ERP um, that's going to allow that too. And now we're going to be talking about manufacturing as a service or MAS. M-A-A-S. Correct. Yes. And, and essentially there's a lot of companies out there that have taken over that acronym SAS and they put their spin on it like we're going to talk about today. Yeah, well, I look forward to interviewing our repeat guest today and discussing mass with yes. him. Um, but before we get there, there's always a couple things you want to talk about. What's keeping you awake at night? Well, you've been sleeping because you've been on vacation. I, unfortunately, have not, but uh, I I've been awake at night. I was up today at 3 a.m., but... Uh, that's okay. But what's keeping you awake before you know, honestly, I start with, crying to the Yeah, I mean, honestly, what, what's keeping me awake at night is just that my body's sore. I was trying to protect... Aww, I, was, wham, I, was, wham, I was, you know, like, I, I was being a... What do they call and it? you're like a young a, guy. They, what do they call it? Like a vaqueros? Uh, a uh, what? A uh, uh, Mexican cowboy. So I was riding a horse on the a beach. A vaqueros. Okay, whatever. A vaqueros. And then I was also mountain biking in Mexico. So, you know, I'm, I'm just a little sore. Oh, know? I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't feel bad for you, but I'm sorry. What about you? What's keeping you up at night? Well, right now, I, I, what's keeping me awake is deliveries. You know, we're we're really busy, and um, not that we have a delivery problem, but we've got to stay on top of our deliveries, and um, th that's something that I wake up and think about. You know, in, in the course of the night, and just keeping those spindles running, the throughput of all the work in the shop is is really important to me because that's another process that's an efficiency that we have to yeah, if you're not making chips you're not making money yeah it's, what I, do they also i've say? heard that if before the, if the spindle's not turning you're not earning that's something like yeah that. that's somebody else's tagline not ours no it's just a tagline I mean, it it's is not like we made up you know i mean i think the metalworking nation knows we didn't make up the, the term we didn't if you're not making chips no, we're trademarking it yeah it's ours now <laughs> it's ours now but anyway so that that's what's keeping me awake and um but it, it's kind of interesting and funny that those things that are keeping me awake at night right now are the sol the solution is going to be hel helpful is is our guest today because they are helping me um, increase our throughput um, in keep a way the and keep the spindles running and keep keep the delivery schedules on task. I yes. think that's the most important thing. So what do we got for manufacturing news? So when I was looking for this article, I, I you know I saw all these articles. Of, you know, Nick always says pick something that's timely and relevant. And actually, um, May was not a good month for manufacturers. It was down. I felt it. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Yeah. Oh. It was, yeah. I mean, we can we can kind of tell because we got thousands of customers. We can kind of tell the general pace of 
where no manufacturing kidding. is at. It, yeah, so it was, kind of, it was kind of interesting. Um, I know you just got a huge order in May, so you didn't really get affected by that. No, right? and we're, we're trying to diver diversify so we're not affected by um, the economy. But any, anyway, regardless of that, I didn't want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about something positive. And this particular um, article is about the fourth industrial revolution, which I thought was kind of interesting. The first industrial revolution used water and steam power to mechanize production. The second used electric power to create mass production. Right. The third used electronics and information technology to automate production. Now, a fourth industrial revolution is building on the third where the digital revolution that has been occurring since the middle of the last century. It is characterized by a fusion of technologies that are blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Yeah, so I thought that was really cool. And they, they were ta they're talking about manufacturing in New York. Um, that they're, they're saying it's up. They're saying that they're, re they're ready to move into the next thing and that everybody from our industry sector better start seizing these new technologies to really get this fourth industrial revolution off the ground and really and make it you know happen you know what the fifth industrial revolution is? i don't please it's, please. it's going to be where robots are manufacturing yeah. robots kind of like star wars you know something like that i'm calling it out right now okay i don't I, think anybody's talking about it i guess I but it, you know, more importantly, they talk about the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Um, uh, it says where the authors of this piece are designing and building an advanced, vertically integrated flagship factory. It has uh, has bet big on the fourth industrial revolution. So um, I just thought that was an interesting uh, article about newer processes that we all need to start implementing and it kind of aligns with our guests today and the processes and mass. Well, so instead of delaying any longer, Jim, shall we introduce our guests? I think we should. Go ahead. We have on the show today, Michael Dixon. Michael is the VP of the Partner Network at Zometry and has been with the company practically since the beginning. His tenure at Zometry has spanned across multiple strategic and tactical functions, and he loves helping manufacturers grow their businesses through the Zometry platform. Welcome to the show, Michael. It's great to be back. Thanks for having me again. Michael, welcome. Yeah. It was 20, uh, September 2017 I know. when we were out in Fort Wayne at GT Automation. It was like yesterday. It does, no, seriously, <laughs> it does feel like yesterday. Thank you, thank you for reiterating that. But uh, no, it's good to have you back. I know we've been talking a lot, and I think that um, there's a lot of good information that we'd like to share with the metalworking nation today to really equip them and inspire them to do things differently in their in their companies. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I would encourage everybody to go back to that episode 122, but for those manufacturing leaders who are not familiar with the Zometry platform, can you can you just give us like a short summary of what Zometry is all about? Sure, absolutely. So, Zometry is uh, the customs or sorry, the country's largest custom manufacturing on-demand platform, and we're headquartered both in uh, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C., and we also have a new headquarters in Kentucky, which we can talk a little bit more uh, later. Um, so we were founded in 2014, and we've grown quickly since then, and we make custom parts for over 16,000 customers now, um, and spanning CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing, injection molding, urethane casting, and our customers include NASA, GE, Dell, uh, some of the biggest organizations in the world, and you know some of those uh, names I just mentioned, including Dell, BMW, and GE, are also our, uh, our customers as well as some of our investors, and we're really proud of that fact. First, talk about the partner, the the instant quoting, because that is just that that is so robust and so innovative, um, and mass for the acronym mass. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say I've got a part, you know, I, I, I do, and we've been talking lately um, with Zometry. Let's say I've got this part that I do not have capacity in my shop to do. It's, it's due in a few weeks. I'm looking out into the shop. My, all my machines are running. I don't see any let up in the next few weeks. And I've got a hot customer that is calling me about this job. And I'm I, I'm panicking. Sure. So what do I do? I just I I grab the STEP file, uh, upload it right to the to the portal. Yep. 
and in a matter of literally instantaneously, yep. I can get a quote back um, and a delivery. That's right. A price and delivery. Yeah, and you know, even you know, you talk about in a matter of weeks, and so we can deliver parts in a matter of days as well. Right. So I know that. Um, you know. It's as simple as, as you described it, Jim. You know, you upload your 3D CAD file, and it can be any, you know, a solid part file, a step file, um, or an STL if it's for 3D printing. Um, and it's as simple as you know, you select your process material. So if it is a machine part or 3D printing, uh, and the system will even update as you're modifying these selections. So exactly, it'll give you a lead time, uh, it'll give you the price, and it gives you the option. Uh, we've even expanded some of the offerings to do, you know, things like part marking as well as, uh, you know, we've expanded our finishing offerings. So, you know, so often the OEMs send out quote packages to us. So I get a quote package and they're 85 to 92 percent might be something that is exactly what we do at Car Machine and Tool. But there's going to be some sheet metal fabrication, there's going to be some turning, there might even be some Swiss parts that are inside that package. Everyone wants ease of doing business nowadays. Nobody wants to split up packages or anything else. So I can take that package from my OEM, which has got 85 to 90% precision machining, which is exactly the right fit for car. But that other 8 to 10% might be turning, might be sheet metal fabrication, might be Swiss, might be something that we we can't do. Right, and maybe they want the whole assembly, and right. they like the way exactly. you package it and everything like that, so right. they're going to... And I, I vetted out Zometry already, and there are partners that I know that their work is going to be good. It's a car quality product, it's our partner company, it's our partner machine shop, and uh, that's, where this, that's where the secret is, because let me tell you, all the people that are in procurement and engineering, they want to work with somebody that's really easy to, to do business with. And somebody, and somebody they that they know and trust. Exactly. People do business with people that they know and trust. And how are your partners vetted out, Michael? I mean, what is the process? So let's say I've never done anything for Zometry before, yep. and I raise my hand and say, hey, I'm, I'm a machine shop. We're a little slow right now. We'd like to be part of your partner network. Yep. We'd like to start making parts for you. Yep. What is the first step? So the first step is to to go to the website, which is work.zometry.com, and you know create an account with us. Work.zometry.com. Yes. Gotcha. So that will sort of kick off the process. You create an account, and you know that at that point, our uh, partner success team will reach out and, and work with you to learn more about your shop and you know uh, understand a little bit more about your capabilities. Uh, and then we have you know various steps in the process of you know uh, filling out of you know documentation and then uh, filling out the account profile. But then there is sort of a testing period where you do have to make a test part for us. You know, you're in sort of a trial onboarding period, and once you've sort of proved yourself out with the first number of jobs, then we'll open you up to the uh, to the broader network. Michael, so I'm trying to get I'm trying to get in the mind of your your AI mm -hmm. and, and how the software works. So essentially, um, you upload the part. Does the software analyze the part and say? based on the number of holes, based on, you know, this amount of milling, this amount of turning, whatever, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, it's going to take this many hours and you have some kind of like shop rate that you apply against that. Is that, does that sound like how it works or, or is that too simplified? Uh, no, it's not too simplified. I mean, we certainly started off that way because as I said, we were a machine shop ourselves and how we started. And so that's how we started gathering the data, but we've sort of transitioned over the last couple of years to more of a market-based model. So we actually, and this kind of goes to the manufacturing as a service where we're taking, I would say yes, in the front end, we are doing sort of a, a geometric footprint of the part. So we are analyzing features from uh, holes and uh, material removal, things like that. But we're, we're mapping up against all of the data that we have from our partners. So as they interact with us and tell us, yes, I can do that part, or no, that price isn't right, or no, that lead time's not correct, or yes, I can do it. You know, we under, we're taking all those data points, and this is you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of data points now, uh, as we've uh, grown and, and progressed. And we've built some models that essentially will predict what the price is, um, and it's more of a, it's a, it's a neural network-based process, um, which is way over my head. If you want another, uh, yeah. So I mean, well, it's, like, it's not that easy yeah. because for, here, here's the first thing you have to think of. So there's always the quantity, size, tolerance, material. So let me tell you, uh, uh, something that is going to and be in titanium. Yeah. Well, sophistication level is always a huge thing. Mm -hmm. 
But you know, a part that's in 6061 aluminum is not going to be priced the same as something as in Inconel or titanium. I mean, there's a huge difference. Or 174 uh, stainless steel or 300 series stainless steel or or any high carbon pre hardened material that's really tough to machine. So there's, I mean. I'm sure the algorithms that are in your quoting things in in your quoting system are pretty complex. Exactly, they're taking all of that into, into you account. You have to, as well as what our partner network, you know, what the system believes, you know, they'll be able to do it in the time frame and for the price. Yeah, so I mean, like I, I kind of think about this, the the real estate industry kind of like popped into my head. Mm -hmm. So like I. I, I bought and sold a house about a year or so ago and you know people say oh I can't sell my house and it's like well you can sell your house it just mm -hmm. it's a matter of what price you can sell your house at yep. and like when you put your house on the market and it doesn't sell well that's the marketplace telling you that your price too high yeah. or if it sells in a day that's the marketplace telling you that well you might be priced too low and yeah. you know I imagine that your software works in much that same way that if you put if, if it calculates a price of you know $10,000 and nobody is taking that. Yep. That means that it should have been priced at you know twelve thousand or thirteen thousand or, or something like that. Is that is that coming into a into effect? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, our, our head of data science uh, says it all the time. He says, you know, the the price is the price that a partner will take it for. So right. and yeah, that, it's kind of like your house is worth what somebody's going to buy it for, not what you think it is. And that has a lot of factors. Not only is it physically the part, the material, the complexity of it, but it's also what machines are available, who's available. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of that uh, that's really dynamic in the algorithms and so yes it's there are a lot of things going on and it's really about finding the right partner to do it at the right price. Yeah I, I imagine that when the economy cools off a little bit you're gonna see more partners come onto the network and the prices are gonna go down and when the the economy heats up you might have some trouble getting people to take those jobs at the prices that you present to them. I mean this is just simple economics that say, we're I mean, talking about There's here. definitely supply and demand at work here. I mean, uh, oh my just God, this year, absolutely. Just this year, I mean, so January was a little bit slow. Uh, yeah, January was, and, yeah. and we saw a lot of partners return to the platform and that was interesting. And fortunately for us, you know, we, the work was there. We actually, uh, January was actually a good month for us on the sales side. And so it was a great, it was interesting to watch. Like it was the activity and all that. So the models are constantly uh, sort of learning from all this d data that it's pulling in uh, based on activity on the platform. Yeah. So many, many years ago, because I remember Jim, you and I talked about this. I, you know, if you're going to, if you're reading my mind yeah. and you're going to ask the same question that was, I yeah, was going to Yeah. So many, many years ago, and we've talked about this. We, we talked about this whole MFG.com yes, site. exactly. And you know, I know you- I'm a naysayer, about, man. Yeah, I mean, you talked about it. You're like, you know, reverse auction, it's not good. Um, it's not good for the industry. It's not good for the partnership. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see Zometry being, because Zometry is not a reverse auction. No. Um, where do you see um, Zometry being different and why is it better than a reverse auction? I think the primary, the primary reason is that we do not charge our partners to be on the platform. So the difference there in that model was, you know, uh, MFG.com charged the fee and it was in the thousands of dollars and then, you're right, it was a reverse auction So uh, and they had opened it up uh, to manufacturers across the world and so there wasn't good sourcing, they weren't putting the right opportunities, it was kind of like open it up to everybody. The trust wasn't there. It wasn't. So. Uh, you know, really, we're uh, the difference is you know we present the price. Uh, if you there's a way to interact with the the job board. If you know again, like if you don't, maybe that lead time isn't quite right for you, and maybe you need a few more days, and you are interested in the work, but you can provide that feedback. And then if to your point, if we can't find you know it's constantly looking for the right person to do it, then we may come back to you. But um, so that's the benefit is that there's there's transparency there. Um, you know that it's an order. You're not you know these are orders that we've secured from our customers. So. Uh, if the price is right and you can do the work, then the work is yours. As simple as that. Right. You know what else is really cool too? I was talking to Aaron. And I believe you were on the call the other day too, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, you know how you, when you're using YouTube and YouTube kind of tracks your history, knows you know I'm I'm a baby boomer, so it kind of knows that um, you know I'm watching videos or whatever content back from the '80s or or Spotify, you know. Um, Zometry will start directing quotes to you based on your history. So if I'm not touching anything, if I'm not quoting anything in Swiss, sheet metal, turning, and I'm really focusing on the high precision, high value, three and four axis precision machining, Zometry will start to learn how I'm engaging with them and it'll automatically start 
pumping. Is that right? No, that's exactly that is right. awesome. So we just launched a new feature uh, in, uh, called the recommendation score, and it's exactly that. It's like a Netflix. You know, when you log in and you're looking at something, and the first thing you see is like right there at the top is like, hey, you know, if this is something we think you'd like, you know, 99% match or 98, whatever. Um, so we've started to do exactly that, where we're highlighting based on you know if you've done turning work before. And then, you know, we're not going to lift milling, you know, we're not going to write 100% recommendation score for a mill job, you know, that's just not what you've shown us that you can do. So um, we've seen pretty good success with that and partners uh, are engaged and it, it encourages more uh, interaction with the platform and we're, we're seeing that and it's, uh, it's again, it's helping us find the right partners to do the right jobs. So. so one of the things that I'm excited about this industry is that I feel like in the future this industry is going to be more entrepreneurial. Um, we had episode 182 with Brandon Kane, who's an entrepreneur in our industry yep. and I just yeah, see, I see this happening more and more and more where um, people are going to be opening up small businesses and being in manufacturing. And I see, you know, Zometry as a platform that's going to help to, you know, facilitate a lot of those startup costs for that person to, to get up and going. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, I've got a, we have many great examples of that, but one specifically I'm thinking about is uh, there's a, a shop that's in our network that's in the Detroit area, and you know they built molds for uh, to as a supplier into the automotive industry and that's just dried up a lot of that mold making has gone overseas but these are phenomenal machinists and they make just really great parts and so we also have part of the way we manage the network is our partner success score so there's transparency on the you know how they're doing from a quality uh and um on-time delivery as well as kind of their engagement with the platform and these guys almost have a perfect score and so you know, we talked to them like why are you guys so good? And uh, you know, they just said that they have that history, but that with their mold making and they're very technical. But they, you know, a lot of their business dried up, so they came to the Zometry platform, and now they're back to growing their business again because they've leveraged the Zometry platform to do so. So, Michael, this has been great, um, and we actually have something for the Metalworking Nation. Um, yeah, we pretty cool. Yeah, we created an offer code, uh, Chips Fifty C H I P S Five Zero for $50 off at $100 or more through July 15th. That's on Zometry.com. Yeah, no, we'd love for uh, your listeners to check us out, um, you know, see what, how the breadth of our offerings and the service, and hopefully we can uh, uh, win some people over. And if anybody wants to connect with you on LinkedIn, can, uh, can they have the autonomy to do that? Just, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's Michael Dixon, D-I-C-K-S-O-N. Um, he'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Again, it's Zometry, that's X-O-M-E-T-R-Y dot com. And don't forget about the uh, the Chips 50 for $50 off your first order of $100 or more. I will tell you that I have been engaging with Zometry now for a few years, and it has been an awesome experience. They're very receptive, and they do get back with you, and they do communicate. Yeah, so I, so, I, mean, I would just say, you know, as a, as a takeaway for the Metalworking Nation, just try it out. You know, it doesn't hurt to try and check out the platform and, um, and use that offer code to uh, um, kind of kick off your first experience with them. Because at the end of the day, if you're not making chips, you're not making money. Bam. Bam.